Climsoft is a data management system for climatic data. In a previous video, we demonstrated how to manually enter station information. Details about the station must be entered into the Climsoft system before you can start to enter climate data from that station. In many cases, station information will have been previously stored in a separate text file. And in this video, we demonstrate how we can import station information directly from the text file. It's assumed that you have successfully installed Climsoft and have started the system, logging in as a user with permission to enter and edit metadata. Please see the user guides on installation and on user management for further information on permissions. With the welcome screen displayed, click on the Metadata button. This opens the Add or Modify Metadata dialog, showing the different types of metadata used by Climsoft and how these metadata types are related. Click on the Station button to open the Station Details and Location dialog. This dialog shows any existing stations together with their current location. In the previous video, we entered information for two stations, Arin and CTAF, and we can use the navigation buttons to move between these two stations. Before we start on the import, let's take a look at the structure needed for the text file. The file must be a CSV file. This means comma separated variables. So each of the data values must be separated by commas. Here we can see an example. As this is a text file, we can view the contents in a standard text editor. And here we're using Notepad++, which is freely available online. The first row of the data contains the column headers, and these must be given exactly as shown here. So we have ID. This is the station ID and must be unique. Then we have WMO ID and aviation ID. These two columns are for alternative identifiers. Sometimes a station is known by a different identifier in different contexts. In our example, we have no data for these col columns, but the column headers must still be given. We have begin date and end date. This is the start date for the station and is generally given as just the year. And the end date is the date the station ceased operating. Again, this is often just the year. If the station location is still operational, then this should be 9999. Then we have the station name. This is the name of the station and ideally should be unique. And we have the district and the country uh, to specify the region. The qualifier might be, uh, it might indicate the type of statement, such as a, a MET station, an airport, etc. Then we have drainage basin, and this is to do with the river catchment. The latitude and longitude coordinates should be given in degrees decimal. And finally, we have the elevation, which is the height of the station above sea level measured in metres. These column headers must be given in the format shown here. So drainage basin, for instance, has no spaces. Station name has an underscore between the two words. All must be in lowercase and be comma separated. So each row of data then has 13 values. If a value is missing, then you must include the correct number of commas to indicate this. For example, we don't have values for WMO ID or aviation ID for any of these stations. So in each row, we have three commas, which are all together after the station ID. And that indicates these values are missing. Uh, later in the rows, we have two commas, which indicate that we don't have data for drainage basin. The CSV file can be created and viewed in Excel, which makes it easier to view the data. When you save the file uh, from Excel, make sure you choose the option to save as comma delimited. Note that in our example file, we have two records for the station called Hustle. 
This is because the station location changed, so the first location ceased operating in 1987, with the second location starting operation in 1988. To start importing the data, click the Import button at the bottom of the Station Details and Location dialog. For the source type, select Text CSV, then click OK. In the Opening Data Files dialog, find and select the relevant file. In our case, this is tutorialstations.csv. As is the case here, known extensions may be hidden on your PC. Once that file is selected, click Open. Klimsoft should tell you that the operation was successful. Click OK on the pop-up box, then click Cancel on the Import Stations dialog. Don't click OK at this point as this will try to repeat the import. To view all the imported data, we click the View All button at the bottom of the Station Details and Location dialog. This shows us the data in Datasheet View. One thing you should notice here is that only one record for Station Hustle appears in this list. Remember earlier that we noted that the station changed location. However, in this list we can only see one record for this station, the one that started in 1988. Let's return to the dialog box and see if we can find the other location for this station. Note at this point, we will not be able to uh, see the imported stations in this dialog by using the navigation buttons. We cannot still see beyond record two, but to refresh this dialog, we first need to close it. We do that by clicking on cancel and then we reopen it. We can now browse through all stations. When we get to the details for Station Hustle, we can separately browse the location and see the two location records for this station. So the first one starting in 1982, finishing in 1987, and the second one starting in 1988 and finishing, well, still operating. If we move to the last station record, in the details, we find we're on station record number 14. And we can see that this is record 15 in the location records because we have two records or two location records for Station Hustle. So the key points from this demonstration are one, the, the file to import must be comma delimited. The first row of the file must have the column headers and these must be specified exactly and in the correct order. All columns must exist even if there is no data for that column. If you have a different, if you are importing different locations for the same station, they will be imported separately to the location uh, table. 